fellow preppers, tis I the Rumpel One. Why the government doesn't like preppers? This might turn out to be a long video because I gotta explain a few things. But let me get to the point. Reason number one. If you're a prepper, then you don't need the government. And the government exists based on need. Think about that. Ponder it. Reason two. Reason the government doesn't like preppers is because if you're a prepper, you're not part of their system. You don't feed their system. And if they don't get fed, then they die. Government's an organism. So keep those two things in mind. Okay, remember, people came over from Europe, discovered America, and we became the United States of America. Think about where those people came from and what it was like to be over there in Europe. There was lords and there were serfs. Now, I looked up some things on the internet, so I'm going to read some things I had copied. They said the serfs worked for the lords and the lords gave them land and food and protection. Now, think about that. Working for the lords. Government lords over us. They protect us. Some cases they give us food and land. Now, also, many people work for corporations. I want you to follow this along. So you've got government and you've got corporations. People work for either the government or the corporations. Now, next part it says that serfs differed from slaves in some important respects and one of them is that they were not owned now <clears throat> we aren't owned so i guess technically since we're not owned we're not slaves even though i say if you don't get to keep everything that you earn you're a slave but that's my definition they said they cannot be bought or sold. So we can't be bought or sold technically. They were not free because they were bound to the land they lived on and could not move away. Well, strangely enough, there's some people say they, they love to live out in the country here. But they can't. They can't get away. Are they stuck in their mind? Or something else have them bound? Let's think about that for a while. They said if the owner of a manor sold it, the serfs stayed on the manor. They were not sold with the manor, but they did belong there, and the new owner could not move them off the land. Well, think about it. I don't live in the city limits here. I live in the county. But if the city decided somehow to come here and annex this area, then they'd say I'm part of the city. Then, of course, I'd have to pay city taxes on the property. Keep that in mind. They say the relationship between the serf and the owner of the manor was one of mutual obligation. The serf had to work and provide a part of the crops to the lord. The lord had to provide the serf with a place to live and a plot of land to farm and protection. Hmm. So, in some cases, there's government housing. In some cases, there's corporate housing. And these people, once again, work for the government, work for the corporations. It says, buying a manor meant buying the obligation to protect the serfs who live there. So once again, it's stated that protection, government's supposed to protect us. 
From what? From who? Think about that. What's the government protecting us from? It says serfdom is the status of peasants under feudalism, specifically relating to manualism. It was a condition of bondage or modified slavery which developed primarily during the high middle ages in Europe and lasted in some countries until the mid 19th century. Now, if you think about it, like I said, where these people came from, they came here, the United States of America, where the Constitution was a, uh, talked about having a republic where the state protected the individual. But somehow that got morphed into a democracy where the majority rules. And the majority tells the individual what to do. Remember, democracy, two wolves, one sheep deciding what's for supper. It's funny, isn't it? So, how does all this tie in? Well, corporations. You work for corporations, but there's, once again, there's this hierarchy. You've got the board of directors and... Okay, you've got the officers of the company, and even when the company does bad, in some cases, these guys get bonuses. Whereas the people down here, they might get fired, they might get their hours cut, their wages cut, their benefits cut. Meanwhile, the guys up at the top, they're living large. Right? Same way with the government, the guys at the top, they're living large off us taxpayers. You know, middle management, the lower workers, they might get a pink slip, lose their jobs. So you see the serf lord, do you see how this is working in modern society? I hope you do. Now, money. You work for the government or you work for a corporation, you get a paycheck, but that paycheck, before you get the paycheck, the government or the corporation takes out a part and that goes to the government. That's taxes. Then the rest is left to you, the serf. And you go out and you buy things, most likely they come from the corporations. So you see, your money is going to the government or to the corporations. But if you're a prepper, maybe you opt out of that system, if you, especially if you're off the grid and you're pretty much self-sustainable. You're out of the system. You're no help to the corporation. You're no help to the government. You are a problem to them. You're not part of their system. And that's why they don't like you. Now, you might think, oh, no, the rumple one, you're, you're way off. I don't think so. When you look and you see, you look at the government, you look at corporations, and you see how th these guys, they're like the back row in chess, you know, the bishops and the knights and the rooks, okay? They move in and out of government to corporations and back and forth. Check it out for yourselves if you don't believe me. It's really interesting when you look at it that way. They make the laws. Lawyers. Well, they work for a corporation. Next thing you know, they're, high, they're elected to some government position or hired on. And the government, once again, is supposed to protect the individual. But if you think about it, what's been going on recently... All that ammunition that they've been buying for Homeland Security is to protect the government from you and me because they know we're getting a little ticked off, a little PO'd. They want to protect themselves in case we rise up. That's right. So they're not protecting us at all. They're protecting themselves from us. Don't believe me? Look at the corporations. I told you about that video, Food Inc. 
the FDA is c comprised of people who have worked in these food industries that they're supposed to police. They're all buddies. And now these big mega corporations are supposed to be self-policing. They're not. That's like <laughs> the fox garden a hen house. Come on. I mean, there's been cases, people dying from these, from meat, poisons, bacteria, infections. Why? Where was the FDA? You tell me. There's no place to be found. And if you think about it, we can even drag immigration into this. These huge corporations, a lot of times, employ undocumented workers, i.e., you know, invaders from the South, because they've invaded this country. They're not undocumented workers. They're not illegal aliens. They're trespassers. They're invaders. Let's call them what they really are. But they have a deal worked out. You come in, you do a little raid, you can take so many, but they don't take enough to impact the output of these mega corporations. They might get a dozen this time or, you know, two dozen the next time, but not enough to really impact the corporations. And the thing is, if you think about it, if they go in and arrest an illegal worker at a corporation, and somebody from that corporation needs to be arrested too, because we have laws on the books that say there's certain documentation you have to provide before you get hired. And they're, somebody's not doing their job. So, not only should these illegals be round up and deported, but the people in the corporation who are breaking the law by hiring them should be rounded up and possibly deported, or at least put in behind bars. But how often do you read about that in the newspaper, or hear that on the TV news? Hmm, interesting. See, remember, government, corporations, people at the top, they're the lords, and they're lording over us. Once again, the money flow. And they talk about always follow the money if you want to know what's going on. And they th also say things like, you know, whatever you see over here, they don't want you to look what's really going on over here. And that's what put me on to this. Because they're always talking about the economy, the economy. And then they'll talk about something else and they say, well, they're distracting you. You should be paying attention to the economy. Well, wait a minute. Maybe the economy is a distraction. And I think it is. Society is the problem. That's what we really need to be focused on. Society. Now, I've been around the sun over 50 times, 50, over 50 laps around the sun. So I've seen some changes. I can remember when I was a kid, if I did something wrong, there was a razor strap that was probably going to find its way across my behind. Now, today, if a parent were to do that to the child, uh, they'd be uh, put behind bars for uh, child abuse. Oh, you're not supposed to do that. Well, look what it's gotten us. Nowadays, two out of five babies are born to an unwed mother. Two out of five. See, when I was in high school coming of age, the last thing any of us wanted to do was get a girl pregnant. Now it's almost like, oh yeah, I got five baby mamas out there or something. It's just ridiculous. But see, they don't want us to focus on society because that's where the real problem is. And see, maybe if we did that, if we focused, then we wouldn't put up with the crap we put up with from our elected officials. But they've got us so spun around, so misinformed, so misguided that we don't even know what to look at or, or where to look. People are too concerned with keeping a roof over their head, some food on the table, and their cable on so they can watch whatever it is they want to watch, either sitcoms or sports. 
Because if you mess with their sitcoms or sports, then they're going to get a little upset. The other stuff, like the poor performance of kids in schools, doesn't bother most people. To me, if I had a kid in school and it was a poor performance, I'd be at that school board meeting and I'd want blood. It's like, you better teach my kid. I don't want my kid growing up and can't add, can't, can't read, can't write, can't speak, can't think. No. But the schools, which once again, that's the government, <laughs> I think their role has changed. It's not about education anymore. I don't know what it's about, but it just doesn't seem to be about education. How could this country... In five decades, go from being number one to, what is it, 23 or something on the list? It's ridiculous. Once again, government, corporations, the lords, and the rest of us, we're the serfs. So we have this illusion. It gets back to money. See, if you can somehow make enough money, then maybe you can get to lord status. Not saying it can't be done, but it's tough. It might be simple, but it's tough. They don't make it easy, that's for sure. But the other road is if you go down that path that a prepper takes and you're working on that being self-reliant, self-sufficient, self-sustainable, where you can grow your own, raise your own, produce your own power, collect rainwater. They don't like that because now you're opting out of the system. And if enough people did that, then the system might start to crumble, really crumble. And then what would happen? So that's why the government doesn't like preppers. I told you this might be a long video. I think I've covered all the bases. Let me know what you think. I hope, maybe, I've reached you this time so you can see that all this stuff that we focus on is what they want us to focus on. But the real problem is not the economy, it's the society. It's big. It's the whole structure. We've got these lords, the government and these corporations who are lording over us because that's where people get their money. In most cases, if you're an employee, you're probably working for a corporation or you're working for the government. And if you don't need money or need to use the government or corporation as a source of income, then you are not in the system. See, now if you go out and you start a business and you start a corporation, now you become part of that system. And that's okay. But it's these people who are preparing, who are being smart with their money, not wasting it, buying things at garage sales and yard sales and thrift stores, planting gardens in their front yard. And the city come in and say, you can't do that. That's against some city ordinance. It's just crazy. So if you're a prepper, survivalist, that's what you're up against. Let me know what you think. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. And remember, if you fail to prepare today, you might not be able to prepare tomorrow.